In today's video, I am going to teach you how to wire up brake lights. And the cool thing is, we've got two different style brake switches. So let's get started. The two most common brake switches that you'll find are the type that goes in the brake pedal. Now, this kind is normally connecting these two things together. And when this is pushed in, it actually breaks the connection right here. And this is meant to go on the top of the brake pedal. So when the brake is up, this is open and therefore there's no connection between those two. And then as soon as you push the brake pedal down, this little plunger pops out and it makes the connection between these two points. Now this one goes usually in the master cylinder or nearby the master cylinder and it actually, actually plugs into the hydraulic line and hydraulic fluid actually goes in here or brake fluid. And these are really cool because you can use them in like any sort of brake system you want. And it's just a, a pressure switch that works off of brake fluid. So if you push in on this, it makes the connection. If you don't push on this, then the connection is open. So let's wire these things up and I'll show you the difference. We're gonna start off by using the hydraulic switch first because personally, I think they're the most fun. Now, before I talk about that though, let me tell you what we're doing with this circuit here. Here's the way you can wire up your taillights. Now, let's assume you want two taillights. You want one on the left and one on the right. These are 1157 bulbs, which are basically the same as 2057 bulbs. And these type of bulbs came in all sorts of vehicles for like 50 years. And they were often brake light bulbs. Now, each socket has three wires going to it because these bulbs are two filament bulbs. So basically it's like having two light bulbs in one. So in this circuit, for this demonstration, we're only gonna be using one of the wires, which is the red wire. You can see I have white wires tucked down in there and they're not going to anything. But if you're building a car um, circuit, you could actually use these other wires for turn signals or uh, running lights or something like that. Now up here, we have a five pin relay. Now, a five pin relay is actually a pretty simple device, and it's basically just a switch, it's an electric switch, where you can control a large amount of electricity with a small amount of electricity. Because if you run a lot of electricity through a tiny switch, you'll burn out the switches. But you can run a lot of electricity through a relay because they're meant to. So what you do is you have a little tiny switch, tell the relay to turn on and off, and then that controls all the electricity. All right, so the last thing we have here in this circuit is a couple of fused wires. Now, these are as simple as they look. It's just a fuse in the middle of a wire, but you can absolutely do something like this. So if you decide that you want to have an actual fuse panel, or if you're using one that's already in your car, you can definitely go with something like this instead of using the fused wires. Because honestly, these things get sloppy once you start having like, you know, three or four of them, they start getting really messy. So something like this is a much better option. You don't have to use this exact one. There's like a million different options you can, uh, you can buy. You can buy them with four fuses. You can buy them with 30 fuses. Like every option you could have ever imagined is available online. So just shop around. I'll have a link to this one probably in the description. So you can check that out if this is what you're after. I think this one was like 20 bucks. For today's circuit though, we're gonna keep it simple and just use the fused wires. All right, so let me tell you how this circuit actually works. We have 12 volt power coming in on two different fused wires. Now one of those power wires goes to the switch. And then the other side of the switch is this white wire. Now you'll see on this label right here, white is pin 86 on the relay. Now, if you look at the bottom of a relay, the numbers of each pin are actually printed on the bottom of these five pin relays. And you actually don't need to use a five pin because we're not even using one of the pins. You could use a four pin uh, relay as well. All right, so the power comes into the switch, goes on the white wire to pin 86 on the relay. Now on the other side of the relay is pin 85, and that is the black wire. So you can see right here, black pin 85. Now the black wire is ground. Now I also share that ground with the wires that go to these bulbs. But if you're building this circuit in a car or an ATV or a moped or a dirt bike or a motorcycle or something, 
then you can actually just use a chassis ground. So you can just ground these wires right to the chassis of the vehicle and you don't actually have to tie them all together somewhere. You can just ground them right to the chassis. So the other power wire that comes in, it's fused, it goes to pin 30. Now that's the blue wire right here and that's basically the main power source. That's the big power that comes into the relay. On the other side of that is the yellow wire. That is the power going out of the relay. Now, this switch is basically telling the blue wire to send electricity to the yellow wire. So the yellow wire has power coming out and powering up each bulb. So let's hit the switch and see what the heck happens. Now you might be saying, Jeremy, you don't have a master cylinder here and you don't have any hydraulic uh, pressure going into the switch. And you're right. But I do have a center punch that fits nicely into the switch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push in here and you'll see that with the pressure on inside the switch, the light bulbs turn on. So just imagine you push your brake pedal down, fluid pressure builds up in, inside the switch and it pushes the little valve inside and it turns on your brake lights. And then you let your pedal up and it turns off the, pedal, the brake lights. Pretty rad, right? All right, let's do the other switch. All right, we'll just pull this one off. Do the old switcheroo with this. Now, as soon as I plug this in, these two bulbs are gonna light up because its natural state is to actually have the switch closed. So watch this. See? Now the lights are on because this, is, this natural state is a closed switch. When you push on the little white plunger here, you'll see it opens the circuit and therefore tells the lights to turn off. So these are a really cool setup. They're really easy to install on your brake pedal. And you basically just attach it to the upper side of the brake pedal. So anytime you push the pedal down, the plunger pops out. And then when the pedal comes back up, it pushes the plunger in and it turns off your lights. So think that through for a second. It makes total sense, I promise you. If you look underneath your dashboard of most cars, you're gonna find one of these switches. They're super common. These type of switches are more old school. You find them in old Fords, like we'll say a 60s Ford Thunderbird probably. A lot of different manufacturers used them though, and they are pretty great to just get a simple brake uh, circuit going. In the interest of not blinding myself any further, I've swapped back to the hydraulic switch. But there's one more thing I wanted to mention. I've also got LED options. When you have a, a really simple circuit like this, you can pull out your 1157s, and if you wanna go with LEDs, you can totally do that. You just plug them right in, and they will totally work. All right, so they're now in place. Let's push on the plunger. Oh yeah! Those things are bright, huh? Those will blind you. I would hate to be the person behind you in traffic. I can't see. Okay, we've got the incandescent 1157s back in. You can see it's much less bright. And now, I wanna just have a little fun with this. So, let's try something crazy. So now I've hooked up the brake switch circuit to the turn signal circuit and the hazard switch circuit. So I think the only major system I'm missing here is headlights. But we can work on that another time. Let's see if this thing actually works. Okay, so left turn signals, right turn signals. Okay, so far so good. Hazards, that's pretty good. Or a four-way flasher, depending on where you're from, I guess. And then let's see if the brake switch does anything. Oh yeah, totally works. So now I wonder what happens if you do the turn signal and the brake switch. All right, so we got right turn signal and the brake switch. It looks like it is pulsing, so that's good. Let's do the other side. Very nice. 
I think we should, what we should try next though is some normal 1157 bulbs for the back brake lights. So let's do that. All right, let's see what the brakes look like now. All right, we got brakes. Now let's try a turn signal. You can see how it's a dual filament bulb and both filaments are now working. So we got one filament going, then we got the other one lit up with the brakes. Pretty cool. All right, well, I guess that wraps up the brake switch video for today. I hope you learned something. I know I had fun doing it. And if you liked the video, be sure to subscribe and share it. And uh, maybe I'll see you on the next one.